Six years ago, in 2015, was the first mention of Ultra Instinct in Dragon Ball Super. That or at the beginning of 2016, when we told Goku and Vegeta that they need to separate their mind and their body, that each has to think on its own. We've seen flashbacks to that in the Tournament of Power. That moment was the idea that was created. The idea of having something and achieving something that will be the ultimate power or the ultimate thing to have to reach the point where you are the strongest. That was what we said and what he meant by what he said. Even in the torrent of power when all of the gods of destruction stood, we smiled and was happy that Goku finally achieved Ultra Instinct. It all hinged on the point that it was the ultimate power. As the manga continued, we knew that Ultra Instinct alone is not enough. The gods of destruction have their powers. Zeno has his and every being has his own. Granola without Ultra Instinct was able to beat Goku with mastered Ultra Instinct. That all shows that there is a lot of things to make you different. Enter a new chapter in Dragon Ball Super where we tells Goku that he needs to figure out his own version of Ultra Instinct by understanding himself meaning that ultra instinct alone is not enough it's not the key to anything and it will never be the key it's just a bridge to what you need in this exact moment it was the moment that we trained goku for the moment that was the end of an era you might say the moment that he lost him since he will take his own path now, he will go his own route to achieving something that belongs to him. With the help of Ultra Instinct, he will be able to become different. He will be able to achieve great things. He will be able to become a new Goku. In this chapter at the end where it all came to him, he figured out that he is a Saiyan, that his father was Bardock, his mother was Gini, showed us all that now he's gonna be a lot different. We always told him about Ultra Instinct, about what he needs to get, but he never told him about what comes after, the moment that even Whis doesn't want to admit, the moment when Goku surpasses him and he becomes a lot stronger than him. You have to remember that Whis is just one tale in the whole story, a tale to drive the hero to a new height give him a chapter that changes him but after a while his journey doesn't end he doesn't stop the journey continues and to reach the powers that he always dreamed of he needs to surpass Whis and this moment in the manga is the moment that Whis lost him it was the beginning of the end to where Whis will be his guided will lend him the way to become different it's the moment that Goku becomes his own, figures out what his Saiyan blood means to him. The moment when Whis loses Goku. What actually gives this idea justice is not just the official Dragon Ball Super manga. There's fan mangas that explore a life or a timeline where Goku strays away from Whis and develops his own. And in these fan mangas, it shows the importance of what Goku can achieve. And one of the most prominent one is Dragon Ball Kakumi. Especially in the beginning of this manga, we see Goku fighting Pierce. The way his power is and the way he surpasses himself more and more, it shows why he's special. The way that everyone interacts with him, the way that he is different it just shows there's a couple of fight scenes here where it gives him justice but the most intriguing thing is further down in the manga Frieza becomes a god of destruction and something happens in the universe Whis inspects what's happening it's the erased universes are back and the 
thing is about what they did is they captured Goku. They captured him because they saw in him potential. Saw that the Daishinkan and Whis want him. But why? You might ask why Goku specifically. Put aside that he is the main character of Dragon Ball. The other thing is they saw his potential. It's not just about Ultra Instinct. It's not just about his Saiyan side. It's about all of them at once. Whis lost him in this manga. Lost him because he has far more potential than Whis can comprehend. Far more room to become stronger than Whis can give him. And this is why they got him. And this manga, I love it a lot. The art style, the story itself has many things that the Dragon Ball fans want to see in the main timeline. But it's a different timeline. It's a fan-made timeline. But as they say, in each universe, there's a lot of timelines with different events that unfold. And this is one of them. Another manga explores a Goku that meets the Omni King, not the Omni King of our universe, but a different timeline Omni King, where he starts training with him because the Omni King knows him and sees his potential. He will make him strong. Uh, this manga, what it focuses on is the fact that one day Goku will train under the Omni King will achieve a power that makes him on par with him and to get that power you need someone to guide you you can't be guided by someone who's far below you you need someone who's stronger than you who walked down this road before and can make you rise up and this is what it entitles that one day Whis will lose Goku and Goku will no longer be his disciple and that's when another one takes the torch and that other being is the Omni King where he's friends with him but also he loves him he cares about him so he wants him to achieve his dream and wants to guide him so at that moment Goku trains under him this idea is one of the most intriguing ones ever in my opinion in my honest opinion I wanna see him train under someone from the higher beings the Daishinkan, the Omni King, Zalama anyone whose power can't be comprehended since at that point would be the breaking point the point where it shows that our Goku will no longer be Goku thank you for watching I hope you're safe saying that I will see you on the next one bye bye